right, hello everybody. I am going to be giving you a sneak peek into what I'm really thinking about when I'm planning. I saw this on Brian Hazard's latest bullet journal video and it was just such a treat to hear kind of like his actual thoughts around what he was doing. So I'll just share a little bit of that while I go through and plan my week. I am using a B5 passion planner journal and the weekly passion planner. And I'm also going to be using a kit from More Avenue and I'm including some of my favorite things, which includes matching colors in the Crayola Super Tips, a soft tip Tombow Fidenosuke, and then of course a Uniball Signo in a 0.28. When it gets to be this point in the summer and things are really starting to get going, there's a couple weeks at the end of May where the semester is wrapped up, we get some time to step back and just recover a little bit from the semester, and then you start to dig your heels in and get to work. Um, unlike what other people might think, I actually don't get the summer off. So <laughs> we are still uh, doing a bunch of stuff and preparing and doing a lot of curriculum work and all the strategic stuff that really gets pushed aside during the school year. And of course, this is kind of a unique year because we were moving, but now time to shift my thinking and to do that I set up kind of this future log but just for the summer I actually usually print out a monthly calendar just to visualize that chunk of time and this makes sense to me in my brain because then what I can do is plan backwards I know that we're working toward this arc of reaching this training period I think it's going to be this point I'm waiting to hear officially but we have something at the end of August where all of my curriculum work is due, all of my prep stuff is due this day, and so I have to just work backwards in order to make that happen. So taking into account some of the vacation that I have scheduled, I can walk around some of those personal things to make sure that I'm on track with my major responsibilities in the summer. This is similar to my time chart, which I can link above, but writing this out kind of helped me center on what it is I need to do each month and then narrow in a little bit more on what I want to do each week. So knowing that the curriculum stuff, I can say, okay, all of July, I'm focusing on updating the resources and readings that the students have uh, in class and then spending August really busting ass on updating all of the materials and the Canvas site and stuff like that to get that done, which means that I really have to lay some groundwork at the end of June. As somebody who isn't someone who naturally, diligently works on stuff consistently, doing this makes some kind of semblance of urgency so that I can be like, oh yeah, shit, I really should be getting a move on on some of this stuff now rather than just putting it off until the 11th hour. We kind of joke around by saying that the summer kind of goes like, this is the Friday of summer, this is the Saturday of summer, the Sunday of summer, and then we get into the fall semester. So breaking this down allows me to see from a bird's eye view what needs to get done so that I can narrow it further into my upcoming week. Summer, this is just for general things that I have to do at some point in the summer. I'm sure more stuff will come. So. Let's see. I know it seems redundant because you think, oh, bullet journaling. Don't you just do that all in one book? Isn't that nice? Well, sure. But, you know, I used to be a scrapbooker. <laughs> I, I, I did my time and it was a lot of time when I was in high school. And that was kind of like a really fun creative outlet. I got to make a lot of really amazing pages and cards and boy did that take up a lot of time, a lot of supplies, some of which I still have back at my parents house. I'm sure they want me to get that out of there. And it is really nice to get into my hands instead of my head. As you can probably tell, I think a lot. My therapist says that I ruminate, <laughs> which essentially means you put any kind of mental energy into analyzing, problem solving, understanding, and that I really should give that a rest. And I'm like, well, okay, maybe you should just tranquilize me then because <laughs> that's all I do is think, ruminate, think, think, think. Um, okay, just doesn't seem possible. So by using my hands each week, it's a nice break 
from my mind. And getting to do this is like reminding me about all the, the things that I have going on. And um, for some people, they don't have a lot of meetings, but that's mostly what my life is, is meetings. So being able to do this is a nice little refresher as to what's going on. Be like, oh yeah, all of that. And honestly, I posted this thing this week about like, how do you organize your books? And I had them stacked by color. And because I'm chaotic, I only gave people the options of um, <laughs> sorting by color or by title. And I pissed some people off. <laughs> it was kind of funny. I did not expect that. I should not have been surprised, but I was. People were very hurt by my <laughs> cavalier attitude toward how, toward how I uh, organize my books. And I actually do remember a lot of my books by color, as weird as that is. I really enjoy like visual cues, which is again why I really enjoy a lot of the bullet journal stuff. But man, <laughs> I was not prepared, should have been, but was not. Um, so this week is going to be interesting because I am going to be visiting a friend in um, Kansas. I haven't seen her in a while. And by the time that I've posted this, I will have already gone. So I'm not trying to get stalked or anything, you know. So visiting her. So this week kind of gets to flex a little bit in terms of what that looks like. Hmm. It's always hard because I want to use up all this stuff on here, but it doesn't always apply. Okay, so we've got the spread. And I was thinking through, and when there's like a lot of empty space, I'm like, oh, what can I fill in here? Because I don't really want to duplicate putting tasks in here that I'm going to be putting into my everyday. This is just a nice way to just see what is going on when I put it up on my stand. And, you know, actually it's kind of interesting. I, I just see all this empty space. I'm like, oh, I got to fill it. And I'm like, no, Jessica, what you got to do is take a step back and not fill up a damn thing. So I'm going to put this aside. First of all, look how cute this sticker is. It is from Bella, um, from her shop, The Modest Cat, uh, which she recently closed. But oh my god, I just am so glad I kept these. Okay, last week I used kind of this setup here. And I mean, it's okay. This is the goals from the Moxie Life kind of setup. And then this is just the different roles in my life in terms of tasks. And this is where I put down like, oh, if I think of something on Monday that needs to be done at some point this week, I can add it into this bucket. And I don't have a better solution yet. So I'm going to reiterate this another time and see if a second week using it will bring me some more clarity as to whether I want to use it again or what I can change about it. Okay, can I use any of these? Okay, I'm gonna do this. Gotta get creative with this layering, you know? In the bullet journal community, I've been part of for like six plus years, I have learned that, you know, people really have a, a hang up about the differences between, you know, is it pretty or is it functional? And it, that kind of makes me angry because I like to think that all of it can fall on a spectrum. There's, uh, if, if things in my life just look like a Franklin Covey planner, boring, I would never use it. And so there is a threshold of artsy for me that brings a lot of joy. So it can be both. I am a strong believer that your bullet journal can be a mix and it's what works for you. And as long as it's tied into your intention, a lot of people are like, oh, do what brings you joy and blah, blah, blah. If you like it, then that's bullet journaling. And I'm like, no, sweetie, <laughs> it's not. Um, 
If you didn't know, I work for Bullet Journal and have since last November. And I, it's because I believe really strongly in the deep purpose of bullet journaling and have tried to honor that throughout my years. And even with that foundation, I'm always amazed at how deep it can actually go when we have conversations about our migration and what we're thinking about when we reflect on our time over the last week or month. And people help, you know, kind of lose sight of that in, in the Pinterest of it all. And that makes me sad because it's just, it's such a meaningful system that we could really benefit from if we wanted to. So again, as long as, um, well, I'm off by a dot, you know, you can't be bothered. <laughs> You can see that I literally am freehanding these boxes. Um, because for me, the point isn't always that it looks perfect, but that it has enough personality. And I remember talking about this with somebody because perfection gets in the way so much. And especially now, as people are trying to chase clout, chase likes, or figure out that algorithm, and I've had to really get honest with myself about why that is. Like, I see followers drop and all that, and I have to center on why am I doing this? I don't want to continue to fall into the trap of doing things just because I think it'll get more engagement online. Because, you know, it surprised me to find out that people make bullet journals just for Instagram. And I'm like, who are these people? <laughs> why, would, why would you spend the time to do that? And I mean, I guess that makes sense, but um, I'm literally sharing with you the stuff that I use on a daily basis. Um, I definitely, absolutely need this to function. So, what you see is what I'm using. Oh my gosh, can I even write? Look at how poorly spaced that is. <laughs> so anyway, with perfection, being able to let that go a little bit and centering on what makes sense to me instead of clawing and fighting for, you know, this other metric. I spent so much of my life playing toward other people's metrics that it's just, I'm sick of it. And that's where some of you have been following me for a long time. That's where I got into the whole divorce thing and, and realizing that I was living a life that had culminated in just performing, performing, performing for others and wanting to people please and do the things that other people wanted me to do to get some kind of affirmation or that I was good or I was uh, valuable. And that just doesn't take you very far. Um, it takes you up to a certain point, and that's why we continue to do it. We're rewarded for it, but at a certain point, it just crushes you. So in the similar way, the bullet journal is kind of like that for me. So that's why I laugh at all my mistakes, and I don't even call them mistakes. It's just like, well, that's life, you know? Because we have a lot of shit to worry about that does not have, does not include the kerning on my letters. <laughs> The, the value of you as a person is separate from how tidy your journal looks because who's, whose life is like that all the time? Okay, so at this point, I filled in the categories here. So when I look at this, I'm going to review last week to see what I can do to bring over this week. And then here, there's some stuff that I'll think about preemptively, like, oh, this week I know for sure that I have to get certain things done, especially if I base it on this list. So for example, um, this uh, role here is space. And this is kind of like my, my box of requirement that this will change out depending on what is relevant in that season. So there's still some follow-up tasks that I need to do just to get this done. And that wouldn't necessarily fall into like a goals category. So I have a lot of follow-ups that I have to do here. Um, for me and my home, I need to de-stash a couple of succulents. So I'm gonna add that task here. And for work, I've got a couple of key priorities, like certain meetings to set so that I can stay on track with some of the stuff I had shown you in the past. Uh, and whereas for the goals, 
if I look here and see what things did I do and what did I not do, um, I did a pretty good job of getting back into journaling and I want to continue doing that. So I'm going to carry that over along with meditate. And I could add like a number of times that I want to be able to do that, depending on how kind of ambitious that I'm feeling and specific I want to be. Wellness, this ongoing goal is with my physical therapy and I really want to keep that as consistent as possible. So I'm going to bring that over. Um, again, some of these things are more like maintenance things. They're, they're things that matter and keep up my my day-to-day -day life and well-being versus other things are more novel and the one that I actually suck at doing the most is the fun and wreck. <laughs> Surprise! I'm slightly a workaholic and have a hard time remembering like what is fun and stuff and because a lot of stuff that I do in my downtime could be considered like growth, could be considered environment. Sometimes I enjoy decluttering and reorganizing so I have to really think about how I'm incorporating joy and stuff and I've been thinking about like how much of my life is happening to me and how much of am I making life happen and thinking about that I really want to start you know thinking about what I want to do this summer how I want to make the most of that and not in like a check all the boxes kind of way but in ways that like really fulfill my life and connect with people I care about and if I don't Think about doing those proactively it just will slip away in the summer and i want to be re-energized when september comes at least going through this process helps me bring that proactivity to the forefront of my mind like for relationships if there's someone that i haven't talked to in a while i want to add their name here so i make sure that i either text them or call them or you know set plans with them to keep that moving and then financial, I know that I'm still doing the 365 um, low spend challenge. Obviously, I have bought stuff, but I'm trying not to beat myself up, but just to recommit to doing a low spend now that I'm out of the, the chaos where I would buy stuff out of convenience or out of that kind of rewarding behavior that I do sometimes. Okay, so I've gotten to here. Some of these things... I need to get better about time blocking into my actual calendar. So now I'm looking at this and like, oh, physical therapy. I should just add that to my calendar so that I have it allotted for. I check my Google Calendar every single day, most throughout the day. So having that as a block on there reminds me, huh, I should probably do that. Okay, here's the part where I start to get overloaded. <laughs> I get really ambitious and I think like, oh, I could do that, I could do that. And it's like this positivity mentality, but knowing that I have to be very, very honest with what I can actually do. I have a terrible time estimating how long things take or overestimating my energy in a given week in order to actually take care of some of these things. So as I start adding way too many tasks or boxes in here, I'm just gonna have to reel it in, okay? <laughs> okay, so if I check here... I've got, oh, good thing I checked that. <laughs> okay, so then I can also look at my June list up here to see if there's anything from my uh, June log that I can pull into my daily and weekly logs. Like, oh, I'm going to paint my toenails. Oh, God, how long have I put that off? Time just slips away from you, you know? So now I can put um, something on here that says that it's scheduled. And then electronics recycling, I did that. Did my return. Wow, I put a lot of things on here. Okay. Thank God I remember to look on this. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Like, I'm so glad that I was able to put all of those things into a spot that I could refer to later and bring back into these weeks. I constantly would forget uh, to refer to past lists. So, like, what was the point of making this if I never brought it into my weekly? So, trying to keep momentum going by checking back in with that log, and it's gotten easier and easier over time, and I'm really happy that I've been able to make that a priority. 
For the use of some of these stickers, I'm going to be combining that with some of the markers to create the headers for each day. I just keep kind of narrowing it down, trying to not overload my Monday, uh, which is what I tend to do, and just try to cram too many things in there. So I'm going to slow down, see what kinds of things I actually need to get done, mix some self-care things in there. Like maybe I start off by meditating so that I can clear my head and get into the week on the right foot. So I will add that here. Again, trying to use up as much of this kit as possible um, and trying to repurpose whatever I can. I kind of have a habit tracker already, but I think this would be nice. Put it in here. Because I'm trying to make sure that I fill out my logs every day, journal every day, and take a little uh, vitamin pill every day. So those are things that matter to me. They don't have to matter to you. I'm tracking the things that I'm trying to build into my life. Just kind of added that in there. I didn't really have a super planned out thing. Like you see people like with pencils and stuff. And I just, that's the thing about me, man. I just go right in with the marker. I don't even really sketch stuff out most of the time and I just want to go right in and there's no there's no test runs I just do it live you know we're doing it live okay so when I'm doing my daily lists I have a couple things that are somehow differentiated as priority and a lot of times I would just make everything look the same and obviously that means that everything is a priority nothing's a priority so trying to get better at what are the key things that are going to make a difference in doing them on this particular day and leaving everything else off the page or put into buckets over here okay I think I have my week prepped and you know there's so many things I learned throughout this process but honestly it's just a lot of swirling swirling and managing that and uh, capturing all the stuff that runs through my chaotic brain and putting it somewhere and knowing that there's kind of a spot for it if you saw my office tour video it's so um, pleasing because I have a a bin or a place for most of the things that are coming into this office. There are some extra stuff, but it's so, it brings me a lot of peace knowing that like there's a spot to put stuff. Same thing for my tasks in my notebook. I just, I know where stuff goes. I know that this goes here. I know that this is the process. We don't often reward a consistency in the bullet journal social media world and being able to find what works for you and doing it consistently is really not something that people talk a lot about. A lot of the stuff that you're, you're seeing looks similar to week to week because I found a rhythm that works best for me and my brain and I'm celebrating that and changing it up with the novelty of colors each week. It provides a little bit of stimulation that shows me that time is passing but with a structure that's consistent and that relieves a lot of the pressure in my mind to um, recreate the wheel every time. Gosh, you know, I can't help but get philosophical and reflective in all of these videos. I, I can't, I, I can't stop. So, um, <laughs> I swear I am kind of funny sometimes. But anyway, that is a, a little bit of a peek into the thoughts that go into my mind. For some reason, just have an overactive brain where I think about all the little things and trying to just relieve myself of that pressure by putting those things away. I can address them, but I don't need to act on them right away. And that's why doing like this is really helpful. I'm just trying to get a sense of what are the things that I have to take ownership of and bring up ahead of time. There's a lot of projects that um, I know are happening, but are not the things I need to take the lead on. And I have to let go of asking about them or checking in on them. They're not my things to own and they don't have to run on my timeline. I have to let other people do their own thing at their own pace, just as I like to do things on my pace and letting them figure that out and knowing that I will jump in when I need to. 
So here I am controlling my monkey, my cir my circus. Okay, we have uh, one more week down and many more to go. So let me know what you thought. Um, was the chatter fine? Did you? Would you rather just be like, nah, skip and do something else? Let me know in the comments and what some of your thought processes are when you are planning. Like, thumbs up, subscribe, share, whatever. But I hope that you enjoy it. I will see you in my next video. Bye.